Hey all, Tony Bing here, hello and welcome to my Ferocious Claws build for Beast for Marvel Heroes Omega for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, this particular build has actually been created by a YouTuber going by the name of Luke Garcia, he's also known as Thy Muffin Man, so props to him for this particular build because it really is pretty awesome. Now, with the setup that he's come up with, we have very high uptime on a barrage skill that has a 100% chance to brutal strike, which is fantastic. On top of that, we have great survivability because we have some defensive skills that offer 100% projectile reflect, as well as unbreakable buff, and we can get close to 100% uptime on them. On top of that, we can get 100% uptime on the guarded buff, which applies to all allies. Now, also, on top of all this already, we can get a nice uptime on a flat 30% dodge chance for Beast. So he is incredibly tanky, and he can put out a ton of damage, and he's a ton of fun. So what we'll cover in this video is we'll look at the skills and talents, we'll then check out the synergies, we will have a look at the infinity point allocation where we would place the first 100 points, we'll check out the general gear and setup, and then we finish off with some gameplay. But first up, let's have a look at the skills. So skill and rotation wise, we have a setup that's a bit more complex than what I would normally use, but it is most definitely worth the extra effort. Now, I've laid this out in a way that you'll be using your L2 skills at one period of time, and then once all the buffs relating to that set of skills have worn off, you then move over to your main face buttons where you'll use your spender and apply your vulnerability as well. Now, on the subject of the spender, it would be bestial swipe. So we use this whenever we're not using our cooldown skills. We then have our vulnerability applicator, which is Feral Flare, and this is also great as a spammable trash clear or something that you can suffer for a little bit with this build because a lot of the actual hard hitting trash clearing skills of cooldowns are situational. Now, next up, we have Frenzied Lunge. So, with this, it's got four charges, five second cooldown on it, and also when you activate it four times within five seconds, you enter Bestial Frenzy, which restores momentum, and it gives you a buff where you get 10% damage, and also 10% critical hit chance there for eight seconds. Now, the way this works is, our main rotation is around the buff from our signature, which we'll look at in a moment, which takes around about 20 seconds or so, so it means when we jump back to this set of buttons, we actually will have the full four charges so we can get the bestial frenzy buff. Probably sounds a bit confusing at the moment, it sounds even confusing for me, but at the end of the video, as always, we will show off some gameplay so you can actually see it. Now, the next set of skills that we look at that are all accessible via L2 are what really forms the core of this build. Now, the first one is Barrier Gadget. So when you throw this out, you apply Unbreakable to yourself and allies. That's a 100% projectile reflect chance. Unbreakable gives you 40% damage absorbed. That's for five seconds, 10 second cooldown. But the setup we're using, we can almost spam this uh, within the five seconds. So we've got close to 100% uptime on those two incredible buffs there. Now, the next skill we have is Bestial Beatdown. So this is six hits in quick succession. When you use this, it reduces the cooldown of skills with the melee tag by two seconds. So that would include the next two skills we'll look at in a moment. And this is where everything starts to tie together. Now, I'll also mention through the talent setup, I've got it, so this will automatically brute as well, which is really pretty great. But if we look at the next skill, which ties in with this, it's Grappling Hook Slam. So you'll jump up and slam down. While doing that, you have 50% damage resistance, 8 second cooldown, but through the talent setup, which we'll see in a moment, we're actually able to near enough spam this skill and also spam the Bestial Beatdown as well. But final skill we look at, it's Unleash the Beast, which is your signature. So you'll do eight separate hits in this. You're invulnerable when you actually do it. You generate momentum, terrify the enemy. And again, through talent, we have this set up so it reduces the cooldown of your other skills. Now, I know there's a lot of skills here and it's hard to visualize how they'll work, but we will, of course, have the gameplay at the end. And when we look at the talent section just now, hopefully it'll make this a bit clearer. First talent we have here then is Problem Solver, so with this, 
when you use a gadget or summon power, you reduce the cooldown of other gadget or summon powers by one second. This means when we use a slam, which we will be using often, we will reduce the cooldown and barrier gadget and that allows us to get a very high uptime on that awesome skill. We then have Ferocious Claws, so this provides Bestial Beatdown with a 100% Brutal Strike chance. Next talent is Bestial Fury. With this, when you use Grapple and Hook Slam, it resets the cooldown of Bestial Beatdown. So with this talent, you can hopefully start to see all these skills starting to tie together now with how they work. Talent line 4, it's Leave None Behind. So when you use a gadget power, you and your allies become guarded for 10 seconds when you hit with a power. With guarded, you gain 10% bonus health and also you regen 1% of max health per second. And we will constantly be using gadget powers, so we'll have 100% uptime on this buff. Now, the final talent we look at, and this really does tie everything together, it's Raging Beast and Unleash the Beast, which is your signature. The cooldown on it goes up by 15 seconds, which seems pretty bad. However, it gains a buff where you gain a 30% dodge chance, which is massive. And on top of that, all your skills gain a 50% cooldown reduction. And this is what allows you to start spamming all these skills and synergizing them all together there. But with the talents covered, let's now look at the synergies. Synergy wise here then we always start off with the primary attributes and Beast is lucky enough to have two of the best in their intelligence and fighting and they are covered by Beast and War Machine. For the more generic synergies we have Blade, Hawkeye, Hulk, She-Hulk and also Squirrel Girl and then finally the synergies that work great on a melee character would be Black Panther, Daredevil and also Nightcrawler as well. But let's now have a look at the infinity point allocation and we'll check out where we would place the first 100 points. For the first 100 infinity points then I'm currently placing them into the space gem and gravity well and that provides a huge 50% base health. Now the reason I'm doing that is I'm not using the node I normally use which is the mine gem which gives me extra resource. I simply don't need that at all and also as a primarily melee hero I do like having a little bit extra survivability there. Now if you feel you don't need the survivability you can instead put your points into the intelligence attribute and the reason that can work great on them is intelligence offers you of course your 4% damage rating because it is a primary attribute but on top of that it gives you crit damage rating and crit damage rating is actually added into brutal damage rating and we have the 100% chance to brutal strike on bestial beatdown so that can work out really good there. But next up let's have a look at the general gearing setup. With this section here then we'll look at the general gearing setup for this build and the reason it's a general gearing setup is that gear can change through time and I would much rather give guidance on the areas you want to concentrate on so that way when new items come out you can apply that same information to help you make a decision as to what items to use. Now for the legendary we use the ultimate nullifier, this provides 6000 brutal damage rate and we use that due to bestial beat down having a 100% brutal strike chance. It also provides a 25% cooldown reduction to leap powers, so that would include our slam. So that means we can use a slam more often, which means in turn we can use the beatdown more often, and in turn we can then use the signature more often as well there. But for the medallion, for melee heavy heroes, you can't really get better than Dr. Octopus at the moment, and you most likely want to look for some kind of damage rate, and preferably brutal damage rate in there again, due to the bestial beat down. We then have the Relic, Relic of Asgard providing melee power damage, all pretty simple there. When it comes to the artifacts, look out for melee or fighting or preferably intelligence because of that crit damage rating it gives you, but really boosts up your brutal damage rating in time. And then you have your slots one to five here. You can go for critical or brutal, but you want to go more for the damage side of things, be it either attributes crit damage rating or brutal damage rating all to buff that bestial beat down a lot really does tie into that skill because of the 100% brutal strike chance there. Now just before we get to the gameplay section of the video I want to say thanks once more to Luke Garcia for coming up with this awesome build. If you're looking for a bit more information on it actually check out the pinned comment on this video because I've copied his original post and I've pasted it there and it helps flesh everything out a bit more. Now for the gameplay we have a run through of the striker command bunker. Now 
will also mention this in my videos because it comes up often. I won't be running through this on Cosmic, the reason being that, as you can see, I don't actually have that great gear on Beast. Now, the reason I don't have great gear on Beast in many of my heroes is because I actually spend so much time doing these actual videos. So, the alternative would be that I could do these videos, I could do a Cosmic gameplay at the end, but I could only get through about one video a week because it would take me that long to actually gear the hero. So that's the reason for that. It's a question that comes up quite often. Hopefully that clarifies it anyway. But I hope this video was helpful. Enjoy this gameplay and I'll see you all again soon. Rather than money or objects, give me truth. Control my destructive urges. The path to glory is fraught with danger.
You have won this battle, but the war goes on. 